Welcome back, guys. Um, got a, hopefully, a quick one tonight. Well, again, I say that every time, and then it ends up being an hour long. Um, this time it's different, I swear. No, probably not. Anyway, have you ever wanted to add a USB-C port to your Game Boy Advance SP? Well, maybe have I got the mod for you. Um, this isn't mine. This is actually a uh, prototype board from... Uh, a gentleman on the Game Boy Discord goes by the handle Blind Eye. Um, he sells these on his shop now. When I had ordered this, it was... I, I, I guess I was going to be a prototype or a beta tester, but he ended up getting the bugs worked out and started selling them before I even got the parts to build it and test it. Uh, anyway, I finally got the parts a couple weeks ago, got this soldered up last night, tested it, all looks good. Uh, the parts you order from him already have the board soldered to the, uh, oops, already have the port soldered to the PCB, so you don't have to deal with that. I had to solder this myself because I ordered just the PCBs and then the port separate. But either way, is as long as this works as designed, it is promising to be an easy solution to replace old and busted here with new hotness. Uh, first thing you might be wondering is, well, if you replace that port, how are you supposed to use headphones? And yeah, that is a problem uh, for me, especially because um, I don't really have any other solutions. But Blind Eye has already thought of a solution for that, and he already sells these really cool modules that you can add to your SP to give it a headphone, an actual headphone port. I forget which. I think it goes on this side here. Um, my only, you know, the only thing I'm hesitant about with that solution is you have to sacrifice one of your, um, screw posts here just to fit the mod, but, you know, maybe it all works out for the best. I haven't ordered one yet, but I do plan to. Uh, he's actually got quite a few cool mods coming out soon-ish, maybe, eventually. Um, I'm not gonna say soon because I have no idea when they're coming out, but... Uh, he's got, he's the guy making the clicky PCB for the Game Boy Advance. Um, he's also making this really cool uh, LED indicator light for like Game Boy Colors and Game Boy Pockets. Um, so like if you use a rechargeable battery on your Game Boy Color or your Game Boy Pocket, this is designed to replace the original power LED. Uh, that way it shows one color when it's on, another color while it's charging, and maybe a third color while the battery's low. I, I forget. I don't know exactly how it goes, but, you know, it's it's not out yet, so it's all subject to change. I guess the whole point of that mod is to emulate functionality that, the, uh, that this console has. Because this one has the... Uh, the two lights here and one of these is dual color. That That's what it hopes to replace. Now, if you're looking at my console going, wait a second, that's not right. You're right, that isn't right. This is a, uh, this is the one I reshelled a little while back that was having some audio problems. Um, it ended up being the pot itself was bad and there were some bad traces on the board that I had to reroute. I should have, hindsight, I should have filmed it, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time. And I was watching some uh, some Netflix, you know, just kind of chilling out, relaxing. And uh, it, it took me a few hours. But long story short, I had to reroute some traces from the front here to the back. And then I replaced the pot with the volume wheel off of a Game Boy Color. Anyway... Now that we've got this taken apart, we need to remove this port here. And I'm thinking the easiest way is probably going to be to take some flush cutters and cut the two sides here and then desolder those. Or alternatively, just take some uh, hot air and do it that way. But first thing, I'm going to try desoldering it with some of my flux here. I use this Qualitech PF400 paste flux. I use this stuff in particular because I personally like paste fluxes. Some people like flux pens, some people like the syringe. I like the paste flux, but 
this brand in particular because I have a uh, electronic shop locally that I pick this stuff up from and that's what they carry. So I'm just adding some extra flux. I'm gonna trim this down. And this is probably the hardest part of the mod here is getting this part, this port, excuse me, removed. But the flux should make this laughable. Trim that again. It's already saturated. Probably not, but you know, we can we can dream, right? Okay, next. I'm worried about using hot air on this because there are a lot of delicate components nearby. And I'd really like to get keep this port intact and not destroy anything else. Which you, you you can't always have your cake and eat it too when it comes to desoldering. Unless you're some kind of super hardcore pro, which I am not. I'm just a hobbyist here. Okay, this is working surprisingly well. I need to move, remove a little bit more from this side. I went right into my thumb. <laughs> Whoops. I think I'm going to be okay. There we go. So now it's loose. I don't want to rock this too much, but you can see by how it's moving that these two anchors aren't holding it down anymore. Now I should be able to just run my iron across these surface mount parts and slowly lift it up. I want to be careful because it's super easy to lift a pad doing this. And that is going to be counterproductive. Okay, cool. So I've got that. Just gonna put a little bit of flux on there. Clean these up. Excellent. Now I want to clean up all this extra flux before I solder another board to it, but I gotta go get some cotton swabs. I will be right back in just a moment. And through the magic of television, or whatever the hell this is, I've got a cotton swab. I've already applied some isopropyl alcohol, and I just want to clean up all my flux here. I want to make sure I have no flux to give. The one thing I don't like about this flux that I'm using is that it's kind of difficult to clean up. Uh, it's super easy to use, works amazingly, but the cleanup is always a pain in the ass. Feels like, you know, you're just scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing, but everything's still sticky. And, I mean, maybe there's a better tool to clean up, but I mean like when I get it on my hands, I'll use dish soap, wash my hands with warm or even hot water, and my hands still feel sticky after a while. I don't I don't like it. It's not good to get on your hands. 
Well, no flux is really, but this stuff especially. All right, but you've got that all nice and cleaned up. It's time to add the board in. So how this works, um, this is just one of those, God, the lighting is really awful today, isn't it? Uh, this is just one of those power only USB-C ports. So there's six pins, if you'll focus. I know you can. There we go. So you can see the six pins back there. Um, so what, there's power and ground for each direction and then the two CC pins. The CC pins aren't connected to anything. You would use those uh, to determine exactly what voltage you're going to be using. So, like if you're using USB-C to USB-C cable, um, there will be electronics that communicate back and forth to determine, you know, are we using 5 volts, are we using 9 volts, are we using 15 volts, so on and so forth. Um, but this isn't connected, which means if you want to charge this thing, you'll have to use a USB-A to USB-C cable. Uh, USB-A is, of course, the standard looking plug that you have uh, on your computer, this one. Whereas USB-C is that newfangled reversible one that I'm swapping. You probably know what USB-C is if you're watching this video. Um, now, I'm not quite sure how this is supposed to be positioned or what the easy way to do this is. So, I also don't know if there are any instructions. I probably should have checked. But I'm going to wing it. I'm going to fill up both of these anchor points with some solder. On both boards here. And this is actually really clever. I. I want to applaud Blind Eye for doing this. I would have never even considered this. The ground on the console itself and the shroud of the port are one and the same thing. So he's using the anchor points for an electrical connection, which should limit the amount of soldering you need to do. And then to connect to the actual voltage line, there's just a little through hole via on this little itty bitty outcropping that gets soldered down. And let me make sure that's focused so you can see. Okay. And so we want to make sure, I'm guessing these are spaced such that everything should be perfectly flush. And that gets really hot really quick, so you don't want to hold it with your fingers. Let's try doing this. This isn't working at all. Okay, let's separate that. I'm going to use, I don't know what I'm going to use, hmm, fuck that's still hot, um, I suppose I should have planned this out ahead of time, try it again with the tweezers, just get that in a better position there. There we go. Let's flip that over, see how it looks. 
Yeah, it looks good from this side. It's a wee bit crooked, but I think that's my own fault. I also don't think it's going to be very noticeable. Okay, and the last thing, got to get this through hole via soldered. I have no idea how I'm going to do that with this soldering iron. So we fire up the other one. I'll leave that on. Test it out. Yeah, it's not soldered down yet. So you want to make sure that this through hole gets soldered to the pad below it. And I'm not sure the best way to do that. You do got to make sure that it does not touch the pad next to it. Um, or you'll probably have audio issues. I'll just add a blob of solder. What's the worst that could possibly happen? Let's try that out. So it came on for half a sec. Is it? Oh, see, it must not be soldered down very good. Of course, it's not going to stay on because there's no battery. But let's try that again. Add more solder there. Okay. There we go. Oh, no. Wait, maybe. Hang on. It's hard to say because I forgot to uh, drain this battery to test it out. Still don't have it soldered down very good. It's kind of rough to solder. I think the issue is that my port is not centered. So, you know what? Let's try something sketchy here. Picture that going so much worse. Okay. Let's try this again. This time I'm going to solder on the uh, little outcropping here. Than the rest of it. I'm 
just adding fresh solder because this is uh, flux core solder. This is just a way to add some extra flux. Ooh, that looks a lot better. I can see from here that this is clearly soldered now. I tilt that up and maybe can I get the lighting good enough? Probably not. Ooh, knocked the camera, sorry. You can see there's a little uh, pool going up the side there. Now, when I insert that into the bottom here, and pop my batteria in, and plug this in, aha! How's that look? That's not going off now that I want to wiggle it either. Can hardly see the lights on, but trust me, it's on. And it's nice and solid now. And there you go. And just put it back together. Um, I imagine this is being worked on, and if not, I'll work on one myself, but now there's a big old gap. But I imagine there's a 3D printable bezel that you can insert. And, well, like I said, if not, I'll make one. And uh, post it down below when I got it done. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get this reassembled, and uh, thanks for joining me. Again, thank you, Blind Eye. This thing is super cool. I'm pretty excited to get this. I'm going to order one of your uh, headphone port things, too, soon. And uh, I'll do another video when I get that. Thanks. Just want to add a quick addendum here, because uh, I got this put back together. Everything's working. I still have sound. Everything's happy. Um, but you can just see how much bigger the original port is than USB-C. It's kind of insane, actually. Uh, so you'll, you'll probably want, like, some sort of bezel or something. I don't know. Uh, but either way, it does work pretty good. Um, but this is the cable you'll need to charge it with. You have USB-A on one end, USB-C on the other. C to C won't work because there aren't any um, uh, 5.1K resistors. The CC pins aren't connected to anything. But just to show all is working, because I just realized that other cable that I was using was in my to-fix pile. All is well. Nice and tight. No, no on-off blinkiness. There's a little bit of play, and of course my battery is fully charged, so it went off. But I think that has more to do with the... Oh, because my uh, battery went off. But I think that has more to do with the... Um, the port design itself that has a little bit of play. Otherwise, I'm super happy with this. Uh, thanks Blind Eye for sharing the Gerbers. Um, I don't know if you want me to share them, so I won't. Uh, but otherwise, you can pick this stuff up on his shop. Super cool. He has some other stuff like uh, like Game Boy Pocket Bivert boards. Um, and I'm blanking right now. Oh yeah, and the the USB or not USB, excuse me, the SP headphone jack port that you throw on the bottom of your console here on this side, I believe. And yeah, just check it out. Super cool stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.